Welcome back, my dear friends, for our continual reflection on the second word on the cross. Today, you will be with me in paradise. Here, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 19. This life only, we have hoped and believed in Jesus Christ. We are, of all people, most to be pitified and stupid. What St. Paul says here, my dear friends, if our hope in the Lord, if our faith in the Lord, if our trust in the Lord is for this world of life, this earthly life, he says, we are the most pitified people. We must feel pity for this life because in this life we have nothing. For nothing. So if the disciples have left everything of this world, my dear friends, there is something beyond this. That's why confidently and courageously they could leave everything. My dear friends, we shall read here uh, the Gospel of Matthew chapter 19, verse 27, if you read, what this man has told Jesus is very, very clear and very interesting. He said, Chapter, 19, uh, chapter 19, verses 27. Then Peter said in reply, Look, we have left everything and followed you. What then will we have? Jesus gives a reply. Everyone who has left his house or brothers or sisters, father or mother, Children or field for my sake will receive a hundredfold and will inherit eternal life. Jesus cannot say a word from the cross that today you will be with me in paradise if there is no life after, if there is no life next, if there is no life with God in paradise. Now, compare with this too. Jesus promises here in Matthew 19, 29 that you who have left everything and followed me will receive a hundredfold here on the face of the earth and eternal life in the next to come. The same thing he promises to the thief, repentant sinner that today you will be with me in paradise. It gives that an assurance that what we are looking for, what we are waiting for, is not what we see, what we hear, what we experience in the face of this earth, but there is something beyond uh, awaited for those who love God and those who hope in the Lord. And what makes you and me get over there is this heart of repentance, what the sinner had, Lord, remember me when you come in your kingdom. As I told you, Cain didn't repent, but King David repented. One thief on the cross did not repent, but the other on the cross did repent. And both of them, David and the repentant sinner, both received the mercy of God, both received the love of God, both received the forgiveness of God, my dear friends. If you turn to the uh, book of Proverbs, Chapter 28, verse 13. One of the beautiful, one of the beautiful passages in the Bible, what God speaks on, my dear friends, God's forgiveness and mercy. No one who conceals transgressions will prosper, but the one who confesses and forsakes them will obtain God's mercy. Very beautiful sentence. My dear brother and sister, if you hide your sin, if you cover up your sin, and if you conceal your sin, Bible says, you shall not prosper. You shall not come up. You shall not become really great. Because God knows what is in your heart. God understands what you think. God understands everything within you. 
for he tests the heart and mind of everyone. Nothing remains hidden from his presence. Therefore, God says, when you accept your sin, when you really humble down before the Lord, Bible says, forsake them, confess your sins, and you will obtain God's mercy and God's forgiveness. One way to experience God's mercy, God's love, God's concern, God's forgiveness is confessing one's sins, accepting one's own fault, and bowing down before the Lord. Remember me, Lord, in your mercy. My dear friends, that is what they have done. It is this repentance, it is this forgiveness, it is this mercy made Jesus on the cross to say the second word today, you will be with me in paradise. What a tremendous mercy. What a tremendous love. What a tremendous compassion flowing out from the heart of Jesus to a man hanging on the cross in repentance. This is what you and I need. Now, one more step deeper, what does this repentance cause you? What does this repentance demands of you? What does this repentance really wants of you? It is not a repentance of just for the shallow. It is not a repentance just for momentary. But if a repentance is complete, if a repentance is total, if a repentance is wholeheartedly, it has few conditions laid down in the book of the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 26, verse 18. 26, verse 18 and uh, verse 20. Verse 18, to open their eyes so that they may turn from darkness to light and from power of Satan to power of God, that they may receive forgiveness of sins and place among those who are sanctified by faith in me. If your repentance is total, if your repentance is complete, if your repentance is wholehearted, my dear friends, three things will happen. One thing is, so far, you were under the power of sin and the power of darkness. From that darkness, you move to the wonderful light of God. That is the first condition laid down here. Second thing is, so far, you are under the power of Satan, under the power of sin. From there, you move to the, under the power of God, under the power of God's grace. And the third is, you receive forgiveness and mercy and moved away from there to the sanctifier, to the sanctified people and being numbered among them by your faith. Three things will happen if your forgiveness and your repentance is, is total. My dear brothers and sisters, it is not that I say sorry and then I continue to do it again. It is not that I say I am really sorry and I show some sort of repentance and then I continue to do it again and again and again. But here, once and for all, it's a U-turn. It's a U-turn in your life that so far you are going on one side, you are going on one line. And when you realize that this is something wrong and you repent and, and word of God says it's a U-turn that you are back, never to forward, never to look back. You are absolutely turning and that turning has three dimensions. One thing is from the darkness of sin, you come to the light of God. From the power of Satan, you come to the power of God. And from unforgiveness and sin, you are counted, you are numbered among the sanctified people by your confession of sin in faith. These three things must happen in a real repentance. And David, my dear friends, never again, Bible says, that he has gone back to the same sin of adultery. This repentant sinner on the cross has received God's mercy there itself on the cross. This is what, my dear friends, demands us. 
when you and I are really repentant. One more step deeper. If you repent today, and if your repentance is total, and if your repentance is complete, the word of God says that you shall not postpone it. It is no more tomorrow. It is no more the day after. Bible says it is now. It is now. Never to be postponed. My dear friends, I wanted to read before you book of Sirach chapter 5 chapter 5 verses 4 5 6 7 do not say his mercy is so great and he will forgive the multitude of my sins for both the mercy and wrath are with him and his anger will rest on sinners do not delay to turn back to the Lord and do not postpone it from day to day. For suddenly the wrath of the Lord will come upon you. And at that time of his punishment you shall perish. Bible says do not postpone. Do not postpone. Do not postpone my dear friends. For the word of God is calling upon my dear friends for this repentance. That today is a salvation. Now is acceptable time. And the uh, Bible gives us students that all those who turn to the Lord, my dear friends, he shall not forsake. We shall turn to the book of Gospel of John chapter 6, verse 35, if you read a beautiful, encouraging word that the Bible says here. Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. I shall not forsake anyone who comes to me. Beautiful. Once you turn to the Lord, once you repent, once you want to give up, my dear friends, God's mercy, God's love abundantly comes upon you. Abundantly comes upon you. And He will deliver you. He will accept you. He will, he will not forsake you. Let us pray that the word Jesus spoke to the repentant sinner will give you that assurance of the kingdom of God. God of a loving Father, today we surrender before you all these brothers and sisters listening to your word. Jesus Christ, as you granted paradise to the repentant sinner, we pray when we come before you with weeping and repentance, let your assurance of mercy may come to us that we may live in you. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. May the power blessing of the Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. God bless.